So Tarantino is gonna stop making movies after his 10th film, but over his nearly 30 year career, there's a whole bunch of projects that he's been attached to, but never made it onto screen. And some of them, I can't believe he ever worked on at all. So I thought it'd be fun to go through a bunch of his unmade films and rank the ones that I'm most interested in seeing. So apparently after Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino wanted to direct a James Bond film with Pierce Brosnan returning as Bond. And I would have expected Tarantino to want to direct his own original story, but no, shockingly, he wanted to adapt the original James Bond novel, Casino Royale, and do it properly like the book. It would have been set in the 60s and would have had less of a focus on stunts but be more of a character drama. Now, the problem is all of the James Bond film rights are owned by the Bracoli family, so if you want to make a James Bond film, you have to do it through the Bracolis. But there was a loophole with Casino Royale. See, in the 1950s, Ian Fleming sold the film rights to Casino Royale before the Bracoli family got involved. So technically, someone could adapt Casino Royale as a Bond film without going through them. And that happened in 1967. There was a spoof film released called Casino Royale with David Niven as James Bond, completely disconnected with any of the Sean Connery films. And Tarantino essentially wanted to use that loophole to do his own version of it. Eventually there was a whole lawsuit in the 90s over who would own the Casino Royale rights and they went to the Bracoli family. And they also bought everything Ian Fleming ever wrote so no one could ever try and do something like that again. So that closed the loophole and basically stopped Tarantino from getting to make his Bond film. But he still kept talking about it in interviews for over 10 years. Even after Kill Bill 2 he was talking about wanting to do Casino Royale. And he claims that the only reason they did Casino Royale in 2006 is because he kept talking about it and that the fans wanted it because he was telling everyone about it. Now who knows if that's true or not but it's interesting to think that it might have happened if Tarantino hadn't talked about wanting to do a Bond film. In terms of ranking this I've got to put this in the A tier. I mean the idea of a Tarantino Bond film is just so interesting and it's so interesting to me that he didn't want to do his own story, he really wanted to faithfully adapt the book. And we've also never seen Tarantino work on an established franchise before. Obviously the Bond films are huge and there's a whole bunch of tropes and things you expect from a Bond movie, but obviously his whole thing was he wanted to adapt the book faithfully. So would he try and uh, avoid those tropes and fly against the what we expect from a Bond film? I don't know and that's what I think makes it more interesting because a faithful adaptation of the book isn't something I think most people would expect when they hear Tarantino Bond film. And even even if it wasn't Tarantino doing it, a Bond film set in the 60s is something I'd really want to see, so even though it's pretty unlikely this will ever get made with him, I really want to see a 60s Bond film. James Bond wasn't the only spy franchise he was interested in. After the success of Pulp Fiction, he got a whole bunch of offers from studios to direct all sorts of films. Most of them he probably never gave a second thought to, but one idea he quote flirted with the idea of was directing The Man From U.N.C.L.E. This was a 60s TV show about two spies who work for the Uncle Agency who are working against the evil agency Thrush. And while Tarantino didn't make it, it did eventually get made into a 2015 film directed by Guy Ritchie. I don't have any particular attachment to The Man From U.N.C.L.E. as a franchise, but I would just love to see Tarantino do a spy movie. Obviously Pulp Fiction ended up doing so well he was able to get Jackie Brown made no problem and then apparently after Jackie Brown he sort of grew out of the idea. But it's interesting to think what would have happened if Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown were massive flops and he would have been forced to do studio movies and if he had to do one I think this would have been interesting. I'd give this a B. So you might be surprised to learn that Tarantino was actually a massive fan of Marvel Comics back in the day. If you look in the background of this scene in Reservoir Dogs, you can see a whole bunch of Marvel Comics posters on the wall. And apparently out of all the Marvel superheroes, his favorite was Luke Cage. And he was toying with the idea of doing his own film version in the 90s. If he was gonna do it, he planned to cast Lawrence Fishburne as Luke Cage, which in the 90s, that's pretty great casting. But apparently when he told his comic book friends about it, they all thought that Wesley Snipes would be better instead. As good as Lawrence Fishburne is as an actor, they all argued that Wesley Snipes more physically resembled Luke Cage in the role. Apparently his friends debating it all really turned him off the idea and so he never really went forward with it but it's really interesting now knowing that superhero movies have exploded to think that there could have been a Tarantino one in the 90s but overall I'm kind of glad this one didn't happen. It's fun to think about but would I trade any of his other movies to get a Luke Cage film? Don't think so. I'd give this one an E. Okay so if Tarantino was going to do a Marvel movie in the 90s Luke Cage makes sense as a character. You can see that happening. But the Silver Surfer? I don't know how this was ever on the table. I mean, this is a character who has silver metallic skin and essentially goes around on a magic surfboard. Just 
as a character it's quite out there but Tarantino pitched it to a German film studio and allegedly he wrote over 500 pages for it. Now I can't find any interview with Tarantino himself where he talks about writing 500 pages of a Silver Surfer script so I don't know if it's 100% true even though it's been reported by some places like Screen Rant but if that's real that's crazy that he got that far with it and was that passionate about it to write that much. And this one is one of the weirdest of all the unrealized projects for me because at least with like Casino Royale or Luke Cage you can sort of imagine that happening with Silver Surfer that's going to be a special effects heavy film and when it's being done in the 90s those special effects aren't going to age well. Like it's just really hard for me to imagine this film in any way being good. Like I'm really glad this didn't get made and didn't happen but just the morbid curiosity of what it would be makes me far more interested than a lot of the other stuff so I think I'd give this a B. If their script pages are right there I would kill to read them. For almost 30 years at this point Tarantino has talked about Double V Vega, a crossover film that would bring together Vincent Vega from Pulp Fiction with Vic Vega from Reservoir Dogs. And while it was never confirmed on screen Tarantino has talked about how it was his intention that they would be brothers. Apparently it would be set in Amsterdam where Vincent talks about visiting in Pulp Fiction and it would be about the two of them running some club and something would go wrong. This might be an unpopular opinion but this is one of the least interesting unmade Tarantino projects for me. I love John Travolta, I love Michael Madsen and seeing the two of them together with Tarantino dialogue would be great fun but I'm just really uninterested in seeing Tarantino revisit his own work. I'm so glad he went on to do different things rather than getting bogged down and creating his own little mini Tarantino universe. I also really like that he moved away from the crime genre. We got a kung fu film, a world war 2 movie, a couple of westerns. It really shows his range as a director rather than just getting bogged down in the same type of genre film what we've seen him do again and again. It's fun as a what if, I think the title is brilliant but I just have no interest in seeing this. I'd give it an F. Cody Lash's last one is a book by Elmore Leonard who also wrote Rum Punch which Tarantino adapted into Jackie Brown and it's about two men on death row in a human prison who get a chance of freedom if they can hunt down and retrieve five of the most dangerous outlaws in the west. Now that sounds like a perfect project for Tarantino and he seemed to agree. After Jackie Brown it was heavily rumoured to be his next film after he bought the film rights to the book and in a 2007 interview he said he'd written at least 20 pages of an adaptation but in a later interview he said that even though he loves Jackie Brown he felt a little bit more disconnected from that film compared to his others because it wasn't his original material and I wonder if that disconnect is what's put him off from adapting this book as well. But the fact that he wrote 20 pages for it already is really interesting. I wonder if that was him just playing around to see how he felt about it or if he was really keen at one point for that to be his next project but then changed his mind. Apparently he's still got the rights and as recently as 2015 he's talked about adapting it into a four to six episode miniseries so this one might actually still see the light of day. I'd put this one in the A tier. Faster Pussy Can't Kill Kill is a 1965 exploitation film about three dancers on the run who hold a woman hostage and then in the desert they stumble upon an old man and scheme to rob him. It was a critical and commercial flop at the time but it's garnered a bit of a cult following and made a big impression on Tarantino. In Death Proof the character of Shanna actually wears a Faster Pussycat t-shirt and in the credits of the film Tarantino actually gives special thanks to the director of Faster Pussycat, Chris Myers. Well in 2008 Variety reported that Tarantino was interested in remaking the film with Eva Mendes, Britney Spears and Kim Kardashian. Again it's hard to gauge how serious this project actually was. At the time actress Tura Satana who was in the original Faster Pussycat claimed that Tarantino was definitely making it but really who knows. When Tarantino can work with basically any actor he wants it would have been interesting to see him work with stars like Britney Spears or Kim Kardashian who aren't known for their acting ability but again I don't think anyone was really dying to see this one. Despite what's been reported about it I find it hard to believe this was a project that was ever seriously considered. It just sounds like one of those conversations you have over a few beers where you go oh if you're going to remake this film in the modern day who would you cast in it and then it got leaked to the press or something. And the fact that this was being talked about around the time of Grindhouse when he was talking and thinking a lot about those sort of exploitation films it probably put that sort of idea in his head but even if he was seriously considering it the fact that Death Proof absolutely bombed at the box office probably put him off ever pursuing something in that direction again. And honestly, I think it's probably for the best. I'd give this one an E. So The Psychic was a 1977 Italian horror film directed by Lucio Fulci and was apparently one of Tarantino's favourite giallo films of all time. It's about a woman who has psychic visions and then discovers a skeleton in the wall of her husband's home and for a moment Tarantino wanted to remake it with Bridget Fonda in the lead role. This is a project I'd really love to see. We've never seen Tarantino engage with the horror genre and I don't know how much of what we've come to expect from his style would fit into that genre. Like there's other projects like Luke Cage or 40 Lashes Less One where even though he hasn't made a project exactly 
like that, you can map on his style to those films and you can visualize what it would look like. With a horror film, I just don't know what that looks like from him and that's what makes it so exciting. It could be something really, really different. It's also interesting because Tarantino's whole thing is that he takes these B-movie genre pictures that he grew up on and he loves and he remakes them in his own way. But we've also seen him do that in a couple different ways. Something like Kill Bill is a real fresh modern take on the Kung Fu film, but something like Death Proof is a real loving recreation of those exploitation films. It's meant to look like something from the 1970s. And when it comes to the psychic, I wonder which approach would he take? Would he try to do a modern twist on it or would he try to make it look like a classic looking Jello? You could see him going in either direction with this and I don't know which version I'd prefer to see, but this is one of those projects where he never actually had the rights to do it. So I don't think it ever got past the idea stage. So I don't think it was ever really gonna happen. I would just love to see this one. I kind of wish he'd done it instead of Death Proof, but that's just me. I think I'd give this one an A. Whenever you think of Rambo, you think of Sylvester Stallone, which is why it's interesting that Tarantino talked about wanting to do First Blood, but he wouldn't want to remake the movie, he'd want to do his own adaptation of the book, which is apparently quite different from the film. He talked about this on the Big Picture podcast, and apparently he's read the book multiple times and absolutely loves the dialogue in it. And if he wasn't going to retire after 10 films, he'd consider adapting it with Adam Driver playing Rambo and Kurt Russell playing the sheriff. And I would have been sort of against this before, but that actually sounds like really good casting. Tarantino's talked about adapting lots of books before, but what's interesting about this one is that it's already had such a commercially successful adaptation already. Even though it would be a re-adaptation, most people would view it as a remake, and it would just be really interesting because the original film is so iconic to see how Tarantino would deal with that, with the shadow of it looming over it. Would he consciously move away from it? I haven't read the original book, so I don't know how different it is, but the idea of Adam Driver and Kurt Russell, I think is just great casting, and that really kind of sells me on it. I think I'd give this a B. So John Brown was an American abolitionist who after years of trying to end slavery peacefully decided that violence was the only answer and apparently he is Tarantino's favourite American ever. While the subject matter is interesting, what would really fascinate me about Tarantino doing this project is the fact that it's a biopic. Even though some of my favourite films are biopics, it's probably my least favourite genre overall. A lot of them try to cover too much and so many of them feel so similar to each other. And Tarantino has talked about how a lot of biopics are just showcases for actors and the fact that he doesn't like biopics just makes me more interested to see how he would then tackle it. It's also interesting because Tarantino has written movies with real life historical characters in them like Inglourious Bastards and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood but they were an alternate history approach to those things but when talking about a John Brown movie he says he would keep it accurate to what actually happened and I wonder if that means that if it would still be elevated and over a little bit over the top like his other films are or if he would do a real grounded gritty take on this. I don't know. E either way, I'm, I'm not hugely fussed on this one. Um, I'd be interested to see him do a biopic because it'd be interesting to see Tarantino try that but even with that, it's still my least favourite genre and I could do without it. I think I'd give this a D. So Sergeant Rock is a lesser known comic book character. He's a World War II soldier who has superhuman endurance and is a crack shot. And after Grindhouse, apparently Tarantino was offered an opportunity to direct a script written by David Webb Peoples, who wrote Unforgiven and Twelve Monkeys. And apparently at that time, 2007, 2008-ish, him being offered a script by a studio was a little bit weird for him because studios had been asking him to direct certain movies since Reservoir Dogs and he'd always turned them down. He turned them down so many times that apparently studios had stopped sending him scripts years prior. His movies had always been so financially successful that he was able to get his own projects funded and off the ground. But in 2007, the Grindhouse double feature he made with Robert Rodriguez was an absolutely massive flop. The first and so far only flop of his career. And so for Studios, this was a signal that he would maybe be open to working as a director for hire and so he started to get scripts like Sergeant Rock sent to him. And apparently the script for Sergeant Rock was so fantastic that he almost considered doing it. But obviously his passion project was Inglorious Bastards and he was able to get that funded and off the ground. And even though Tarantino is really excited about Sergeant Rock, as a character it just doesn't interest me at all and I just prefer him to do his own stuff. So. I'm glad that this didn't work out. It would be cool to see Tarantino direct a feature from someone else's script, although I'm sure if this movie went ahead, he would probably rewrite a lot of the dialogue to sort of suit his own voice. I'd be more interested in this if we hadn't already seen Tarantino do a World War II movie, but we did with Inglourious Bastards, so there's really not a whole lot in the idea of Sergeant Rock that sells me on it. Now, of course, I haven't read the scripts for Sergeant Rock, so maybe if I read it and I saw it was on the page, I'd go, this is amazing and desperately want to see it, but unless it leaks, I guess we'll never know. For me, I'd give this an E. Of all the unmade Tarantino projects, the one everyone talks about, including Tarantino himself, is Kill Bill Volume 3. And out of all of them, 
this is the one I want to see the least. Now I get why everyone gets excited about it. Kill Bill 1 and 2 are great and the idea of rounding it out with a trilogy feels really satisfying. And Tarantino has talked a lot about what his plan for Kill Bill Volume 3 would be. It would follow Nikki, the daughter of Vivica A. Fox's character in Kill Bill and she would understandably want to get revenge on the ride after she killed her mum. And as a setup for Volume 3 that does sound pretty great and I've seen a lot of fan casts for Zendaya to play the role of Nikki and that would also be fantastic but for me we already got four hours of Kill Bill and it was great and the story was complete. We don't need any more. And I always worry about sequels. There's always a risk that the next one sucks and every time there's a subpar sequel in a franchise I think it makes the original just a little bit worse. I don't want that happening with Kill Bill and I also just have no interest in seeing him revisit stuff he's already done. I want to see new films in a new genre in a new direction. Now of course if he did do Kill Bill Volume 3 I'd be there opening weekend. I'd be excited as hell but I'm glad he's gone on to do other projects instead. Out of all the unmade ones, this is my least favourite. I'd give this an F. So Tarantino had started writing Inglorious Bastards even before Kill Bill and apparently he was having a lot of trouble writing it. Not because he couldn't come up with stuff, it was the opposite problem. He was writing way, way too much and it was all becoming too big and unwieldy to fit into one film. The original script had what we saw in the finished film with Aldo Rain and the Bastards but apparently there was a cut sub story that followed a group of black troops that got fucked over by the American military and they just went absolutely crazy going on a war path onto Switzerland. Obviously all of this stuff got cut out of Inglorious Bastards but he still had loads and loads of it written and apparently after Django Unchained he was considering turning it into its own movie called Killer Crow which is a pretty great title but as we know he had the western bug and he went on to do The Hateful Eight instead and I'm kind of glad. While Killer Crow sounds great it also sounds really similar to Inglorious Bastards and the fact that it's all material he decided to cut as well makes me think it's for the best that it was left there. Maybe it would have been really different from Inglorious Bastards. What I liked about the difference between Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight, even though they were both westerns, is that they were both completely different movies with completely different approaches to the western and maybe that would be the same with Killer Crow and Inglorious Bastards in terms of the World War II movie. But I don't know, if it's just another Men on a Mission movie, I think we've seen it with Glorious Bastards and I, I don't need another one. I'd give this a C. So after the release of Django Unchained, there was actually a crossover comic released also written by Tarantino called Django slash Zorro. And there was interest from Sony into turning that into a movie as well. Tarantino brought on comedian Jared Carmichael to write a script. And apparently on Oscar night 2020, Tarantino approached Antonio Banderas about the possibility of him reprising his role as Zorro for the film. And hearing about the possibility of an older Antonio Banderas playing Zorro again sounds really cool. No, I wouldn't want to see Tarantino direct this, I'd prefer to see him do new and original stuff rather than a sequel, but this is a movie I'd like to see. I love Antonio Banderas, I'd love to see more Jimmy Fox as Django, and Jared Carmichael is so funny and such a talented writer. But then the pandemic happened which stole all projects in Hollywood, and Jared Carmichael said his script would have cost like $500 million to produce, so it's unlikely that we're ever going to get to see this made, which is kind of a shame, but maybe it's for the best. Either way, the fact that this is a western, and I want to see more modern westerns sort of endears me to this one more than a lot of the other films so I think I'd give this a B. Okay so this one is the absolute wildest to me. Back in 2017 it was announced that Tarantino was going to direct a Star Trek film. At the time we didn't get a lot of information but we now know that it was going to be based on the original series episode A Piece of the Action. It's set on a planet that looks like Earth but all of the aliens have taken the form of 1920s gangsters and Kirk and Spock get stuck in this gang dispute between all the different gangsters. There's not a huge amount of information out there but unlike some of the other unmade projects that were just ideas or things that never really progressed, this was a project that Tarantino was actively working on and had written stuff for. The Revenant screenwriter Mark L. Smith was brought on to help write the project and apparently the two of them were watching gangster movies in preparation for the project. Smith said this was going to be an R-rated film with Pulp Fiction levels of violence and Tarantino was was keen to do it. But the big problem was this would be Tarantino's 10th movie and he said for years on the record that he was only going to make 10 films and he just couldn't quite bring himself to make his final film a Star Trek movie. And if he is only going to do 10 movies I wouldn't want his last film to be a Star Trek project either. But of all the movies on this list this is the one I want to see. I mean what other director could convince Paramount to let them riff on one of their most popular projects? Maybe you could see another director pitching a movie based on that episode but no other director gets an R rating out of it. And again we've never seen Tarantino do sci-fi and we've never seen him do that 1930s gangster and it'd be such a weird mix of the two. And what's frustrating is apparently there's a full script written. It's real and it exists and I would kill to be able to read it. But unless there's some massive leak or something we'll never know. 
Now, when it comes to his final project, if I had to pick between a Star Trek film or a completely original script, I'd pick the original every time. But I'm so curious to know what this would have been. This is an ass. So aside from those specific projects, there's a lot of vague ideas he's talked about maybe wanting to have done. He talked about wanting to do a children's film, kind of like The Mighty Ducks, because those are films that kids watch over and over and over again, and they have a real love for and appreciation for, and it sticks with them as they grow up. And I think he liked the idea of doing that. There was rumours about a medieval film he'd do, with Helen Mirren apparently playing a foul mouth monarch, which would be kind of interesting. I'd love to see Tarantino go into the sword and sorcery genre. He's also talked about wanting to do a classic 20s and 30s gangster movie, which kind of would have been covered by the Star Trek project. But as a filmmaker you're always going to have more ideas, more interests than you're capable of doing, especially when you're writing and directing. And it's been really interesting reading about all these projects because although we consider Tarantino one of the few filmmakers who can seem to make whatever he wants and he's known for creating his own iconic characters, it's interesting seeing how open he was to adapting other people's work. I shouldn't be that surprised considering Jackie Brown was an adaptation and Django was already a pre-established character and he's already so open about the influences he has and what he's lifted from other movies. But even with that, I still can't believe he was open to doing a Silver Surfer project or even a Star Trek film. So here's my final ranking of where I'd rank these unmade projects. Let me know what you think think in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong and if you want to see more stuff subscribe.